Now turn towards the surface integral. Consider a smooth surface drawn in a vector field. Consider we have a smooth surface drawn in a vector field like this. The vector function is continuously varying vector point function at point P on small surface element ds. This is small surface element ds. Then this is the direction of the function f bar. If you draw the normal, oh sorry, perpendicular to the surface, it goes along this direction. This is perpendicular to the surface. This is known as length element vector ds bar and also direction of normal n cap. And here is angle between these two is theta. The angle theta is angle between the surface element vector and vector point function. Then the surface integral s f bar dot ds bar is equal to surface integral f cos of theta into ds where f cos of theta is a component of this f along ds that is we known as normal no, sorry nor, normal component of the vector along ds and surface integral is denoted by 2 integral this is known as surface integral. Okay. If f, f bar is in Cartesian coordinate system, then uh, we can write integration over s f bar dot dl ds bar is equal to double integration over s f1 dx sx plus f2 dsy plus f3 d s z or also we can write if f1 f2 f3 are x y z then we can write it is fx dsx you can use any notation f y d s y plus f z d s z the surface integral of normal component of a continuous vector function f bar over a closed surface s is called flux of f bar across the surface or a flux coming out of the surface. If the flux of vector point function across every closed surface in the region is zero, it is said to be a solenoid in that region then it is said to be solenoid in this region if what if then the vector function is known as solenoidal field For example, if f represents electric and magnetic induction at a point P, then the surface integral represents total normal induction over the surface. Another one example, if the surface drawn across the moving fluid such that its velocity changing from point to point on the surface, then surface integral v bar dot ds bar gives the volume rate of the fluid across the surface. Let us see volume integral.
consider a closed surface S enclosing a volume V in a space, the vector point function is defined at each point of the small volume element of the volume V, then the integral fr dot dv covering the entire region is called volume integral of f over the surface. In terms of Cartesian coordinate system, we can write a volume integral as integration over v f bar dv is equal to i cap triple integral v over v fx dx dy dj plus j cap triple integration of v fy dx dy dz plus k cap triple integration over v fz dx dy dz this is all element Let us turn towards the next topic, the fundamental theorem of calculus. Let f of t be a continuous real valued function defined on a closed interval a v. Let fx be the function defined for all x in closed interval a v. By the relation we can write f of x is equal to integration from a to x f of t dt then f of x is continuous uniformly continuous on a b that is in the region a b and differentiable on open interval a b this is known as closed interval this is known as open interval. Closed interval AV, open interval AV. What is the actual difference between closed interval and open interval? In closed interval, if we have this region from A to B, in closed interval, we took all points A, B, all points with A and B. In open interval, we omit these two points A and B and we consider other point present in between A and B. This is known as open interval and in closed interval we have to consider A and B points as well. Then f dash x is equal to f of x where capital F of x is a uniform function on a b and which is also differentiable in open interval a b and f dash x equal to f of x for all x in a b that is open interval therefore we can write f of x is equal to f x minus f a from this equation we can write f of x equal to if you solve this integral we get f of x minus f of a and for the entire interval we can write f of x is equal to 
integration from a to b for entire interval f of t dt is equal to f of b minus f of a that is we will get a function if we took integration of small that another function with respect to t over the region from a to b a to b here is f of x equal to capital f b minus capital f a that is the function at extreme points or end points that is a subtraction of the value of the functions at extreme points gives you another function f of x now let us see the next topic the fundamental the fundamental theorem of gradient fundamental theorem of gradient the gradient theorem state that a line integral through a gradient scalar field can be evaluated by evaluating the scalar field at the end points of the curve or path that is line integral from a to b of a gradient of a scalar is nothing but the subtraction of a scalar function at point B and at point A where phi is a scalar field and A and B are the end points of the curve suppose we have this uh, curve this is starting point A and this is end point B then the gradient theorem is integration from A to B gradient of scalar gives you the subtraction of scalar function at the end points now let us see the fundamental theorem of divergence The fundamental theorem of divergence is also known as Gauss divergence theorem. It is also known as Gauss divergence theorem. Now suppose the closed surface S, this is closed surface S, enclosing the volume v the surface s encloses encloses the volume v and f is a vector function of the position with continuous derivatives then you can write volume integral of del bar dot v f bar into dv is equal to surface integral f bar dot ds bar are equal to surface integral surface integral we have two integrals f bar f dot n cap ds or what else okay now see here this is n cap is a normal 
vector to the ds that is area element a surface element that is the surface integral of normal component of vector taken over closed surface is equal to the volume integral of a divergence of a vector uh, divergence of uh, f over the volume enclosed by that surface. See here, Gauss divergence theorem relates volume integral to the surface integral or vice versa because we know surface encloses a volume, closed surface encloses a volume, and therefore, we can relate volume integral to the surface integral let us see next the fundamental theorem of of curve This theorem is also known as Stokes theorem. Consider the open surface edge S. Consider this open surface S. You can take any shape of the surface, no problem. but which is closed surface, open, is it planar surface, consider a open surface S which is bounded by a closed non-intersecting curve C, also consider a vector function F is a continuous and differentiable at each point in the space, in the region then integration over closed surface closed curve c f bar dot dl bar is equal to integration over s del cross f dot ds bar or it is equal to integration over s del cross f dot n cap ds where c is travels in the positive direction when c travels in a positive direction otherwise you have to take negative sign Okay, uh, we stop here.